Today we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to go a little bit more in depth into amulets, how they work, um, kind of how I came up with the whole concept and uh, march right along with that. So first, let me just briefly recap a little bit about what amulets do in my series. But basically, amulets give someone who has the aspects the ability to manifest their powers outside of themselves in a meaningful way. All aspects can do some things based on their particular flavor of magic, but to do something huge or to do something um, really outside of themselves requires the focus of an amulet. So how did I come up with this? Well, it started off when I was creating this series. Um, you all know my love for Star Wars, and let's face it, the lightsaber is the coolest weapon ever. And so that was already taken, so I couldn't, couldn't do that. So I wanted something else, something magical, something unique that I hadn't seen before. And so I started thinking, what sorts of things are there? You know, I had kind of thought through my system of magic and somewhat how the amulets worked, but what could I do with that? And then I started thinking about crystals and the properties of crystals. And if you might remember when you were a kid and uh, crystal radios, well, my dad was an engineer, an electrical engineer, and I remember one time, I think it was for a science fair project or something to do over the summer, and we got one of those kit crystal radios. And I thought that was magical. You you have just some bits of wire and metal, and then you have this, this crystal. Now, it wasn't a pretty cool one like a sapphire or anything like that. I think it was Galena, which is, I think, like the crystal version of lead. But anyway, that was so interesting to me that how you could take this and it would take radio waves that were just all around us in the air and, and hone it in and you could tune it and you could hear radio. And so I started thinking about that as I was creating how amulets might work and the whole properties of crystals. They also um, have piezoelectric properties. Basically, if you if you compress them or, or hit them or something, they can generate wavelengths. And certainly the lasers that we have today are real. Many of them have some sort of crystal in them that helps focus a specific energy wavelength. And I thought, well, how cool is that? Now you see where I'm getting. So I took some very basic, true-to-life physical physics, physical properties of crystals, and kind of gave them my little magical twist. So I put some, some, some fiction overlay of that, and I thought, well, how would that work then on kind of a metaphysical level? And I thought, well, if they have a certain wavelength or harmonic that they uh, vibrate to, that they have a frequency for, and we as human beings, living things, we have, we give off some sort of EMF and we have vibrations and harmonics of our own. What if your harmonic and a crystal's harmonic were waving at the same wavelength, waving at the same time? And I thought, wouldn't that be an interesting matching? and a way to connect with that and waving or at least close enough where you could combine and you create almost a symbiotic relationship with that. So that's kind of the genesis of this and how that all came about. And I'm like, well, okay, that's all well and good, but I wanted to amp up things up a little bit, make it really special. When I was a kid, I ran a series of fantasy novels called The Dragon Riders of Pern by Anne McCaffrey. Some of you may, may know this. I think they just celebrated their 50th uh, year of publishing or something. And they're phenomenal. They're really, really cool. And I love that whole kind of society within a society and the way that the dragon riders bonded with their dragons. Basically, they connected telepathically with a little baby dragon as it's hatching way before Daenerys and the whole Queen of Dragons thing uh, came about. So you have this telepathic, almost symbiotic connection with a dragon. And you get, you know, one person to one dragon. If God forbid your dragon dies or, or, the, uh, or the dragon rider dies, it's just, it's just the most poignant loss that you could ever feel. And I love that one-on-one -on -one relationship. I love that intensely deep bond. And I wanted to create something kind of along those same lines. So when I was developing my crystals and I thought, you know, each of us is so incredibly unique and crystals, even though, yes, they have the same chemical makeup, as do we, that what if they were certainly unique in their own way as well? There's always, you know, variation in nature. 
So I thought this this wedding between someone uh, the, who has the aspects and their crystal would create such an intensely close bond. It could only be one crystal to one person, and that only that amulet, only that gem in that crystal. If you lose it, if it's destroyed, excuse me, bug, <laughs> the hazards of filming live outside, um, if you create that bond, and it is for life, and, and if somehow that amulet is lost or shattered, you know, you, you can't get it back. And that loss is so deep, normally most aspected can't, can't live without it. So that's how that kind of came about, that um, most aspected have a single aspect, single power, and they have their their choosing ceremony, got my brownie fly up, <laughs> Girl Scouts, and where they choose, there's maybe hundreds of amulets on, on a dais, on, on an, on a, um, on an altar, and they find one, their, their magic, their life forces, their life harmonics, manages to to combine with one that is identical or close enough similar to them so they create that bond and that bond is for life now different folks that have different aspects can manifest different things through their amulet and certainly i'm expecting some some smart aleck at, <laughs> to, to either come back on facebook or, or at a writing some, or at a um, a reading someday and say hey wait a minute what if there isn't a crystal there that's close enough well that's where some fiction comes in and that's why i do say close enough because there is variation in nature and nothing is going to be perfect or identical but if it's close enough and i don't know what close and i don't know what amplitude or amperage is close enough but if it's close enough they they will they will bond um and, and form that relationship, and I think that's good enough. Although, that is a very good point, and that is probably something that we will go more in depth or explore in a book way, 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 way down, down the road. With amulets, we're, we're talking about a, um, we're talking about a gem, primarily. Primarily gem quality stone, so amulet, sapphire, rubies, topaz, beryl, some of those sorts of things. Um, the different types of gems or the different colors don't confer different properties or in anything. It isn't like topaz makes you more clairvoyant and rubies make you a stronger defender. That has nothing to do with it. It has everything to do with the person, their own abilities, their specific aspect, and their own personal relationship with that amulet. So that's, that's what controls what can be done. It has more to do with what their particular flavor of magic is, but certainly not anything having to do with the color or type of, of amulet itself. So I wish you keen isie oi, or light be yours, and have a wonderful day. Until next time, take care.